Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today we have another DIY Wednesday. Now, some of you may remember this little gem from two Wednesdays ago, because you know I push out new DIY Wednesday videos every other Wednesday. We refinished this amazing outdoor patio table that I got for free from the Starbucks. If you missed that video, I will link it below, so don't you worry. We took this black, free table and set of four chairs that you see at pretty much every Starbucks on the planet. How I got mine was because one of the Starbucks's in my area was going through a remodel and they were giving away all of their furniture for free. I had an inside tip and I ran over there and I grabbed this table and these four chairs. I sanded them, spray painted them, and then I got this amazing vinyl decal made from one of my friends. Put it on there, put a clear coat on, done. If you've seen that video, you're like, why is there a part two, Sherry? What could you possibly do? That table is already so amazing. Well, I'll tell you. In part two of this amazing DIY, I thought we should kick it up a notch with this table, although it's amazing, and you can leave it as is. What this table is lacking, some chair pads, because these metal chairs while okay comfortable. They're not super comfortable if I was gonna, you know, sit out here with some friends, have some drinks, chat it up for a long period of time, my butt might get a little sore. So I thought, let's make some chair pads. I went to the Walmart and you're gonna think, what? I got a twin foam mattress pad. Why? At the Joann's, the foam to make your own chair pads that you know you, you gotta have something foamy in there it is so expensive I can't even begin to tell you a square like maybe yay big it was like 14 something and then a roll of it if you just were like oh I just need two yards $17 a yard outrageous so I said oh hell no I've already put like 60 bucks of spray paint into this thing the last thing I need to do is spend another 60 on the foam for my four chair pads so I headed on over to my local Walmart went into the bedding section picked up this twin foam mattress pad for nine dollars and forty seven cents so suck it Joann's there's a dupe for your foam yeah but don't suck it that much, Joanne, because while I was there, I found this. I love it. It is a more durable, like a canvasy. I guesstimated two that I would need two yards. Regularly $17.58, and I got it for $8.79 a yard. So $17 and $9.49. We'll say $28. $28 for four chair pads that's seven dollars a chair pad right i think that's a pretty good price that's what we're gonna do we are going to make chair pads so our new starbucks chairs are totally plush and comfortable and our friends want to just hang out all day like they're at their local starbucks but they're not they're in your backyard drinking vodka lemonades instead of caramel macchiatos you may be saying again sherry this last diy you got a free starbucks table which i didn't have access to and now in this video you're telling me i'm gonna sew chair pads i don't sew i don't have a sewing machine what the hell lady don't worry i'm gonna give you a no sew option because that's just how awesome I am. You can make chair pads without sewing a stitch and it's pretty easy. We will cover that. But I'm going to sew mine because I'm extra like that. Point of the story is keep watching this DIY even if you don't sew because this is real life and I know not all of us know how to sew. Don't worry I got you covered. Okay so we're back on the floor in the family room. What I did, I measured the seat portion of the Starbucks chairs and I actually took four pieces of paper and I made a little template. I taped it together exactly how I wanted the chair pad to sit in the chair. This is like the front or where your legs would go over the chair and then side, side, back, obviously. It's not a perfect square. It's 15 and a half by 14. Your chairs might be different. Your chairs might even be round, but it doesn't matter. Just measure them out. Make yourself a little paper template if need be. Now, this cheap ass foam is cheap. It is not very thick. 
I don't even know what the package said. I felt like the package said that it was an inch and a quarter thick, but I think that's a big fat lie because I don't think so. Number one, I always knew that I wanted to at least back the foam up back to back because this site has all those weird ergonomically correct pressure points because it's a twin bed piece of foam. So I don't want this part up or down. I want the flat side up and down. So I was always gonna cut at least eight pieces so I can sandwich them together so I have smooth bottom and smooth top. Then I was like, well, this is pretty thin and while two of them is okay, the way I did my math, I can actually get enough to sandwich together three. This is 75 inches long by 35 inches wide. My math worked out that if I cut it along the 75 line of 14, inch wide strip and a 14 inch wide strip leaves me with seven a seven inch strip and then along the 35 if I cut my 15 and a half 15 and a half 15 and a half 15 and a half that will leave me with 13 inches of spare and then at the top I have a seven inch strip of spare so a full 15 and a half by 14 inch square on the bottom, a full 15 and a half by 14 inch square on the top, and in between our little foam sandwich is gonna be two seven inch by 15 and a half inch pieces to make three layers of foam. So that's what we're gonna do. And hopefully all my math is right. Now, you don't have to do what I'm doing. I think doubled up would be fine and you can easily get eight chair pads if you double them up. But I'm gonna have the extra foam and so why not make the chair pads extra cushiony? So I'm gonna measure and cut this foam. According to my chart on this short edge, I'm gonna measure out 14 inches, 14 inches, and then I should have a scrap of seven inches. And then I'm gonna do broom, broom, just cut it along there. This is 14 here. 28 is 14 and 14 are 28. Then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the eighth inch is kind of rolled. So, so I'm gonna go along and just measure every so often so that I can get a straight line as I cut across my foam. And last one. Yay. That's done, now I just gotta draw a straight line. So I'm gonna go get a long level because this Bob wants to play with and will not make it be very easy to cut a straight line. So I ran out to the garage to get a level so that I could make these lines super straight. So I'm just gonna connect the dots. Line number one. There's my long strips. So good size square, good size square scrap area for the sandwich middle. Before I cut these out, I'm gonna draw my 15 and a half inch lines, so then I can just cut everything all together. Where's my, oh, Bob stole it. Bob, seriously. So we've just taken care of the short side, and now we're gonna take care of the long side. 15.5, 15.5, 15.5, 15, and then my scrap or my middle sandwich pieces, I should be left with a 13 inch piece of that. 15.5. Last one and then I should have scrap. Yep, more than enough to make my sandwich pieces. Okay, let's draw these straight lines. But oop, yay! Now we get to cut them all apart. All right, just have my scissors and I'm just gonna cut along the lines. There was a small part of me that was like, maybe you should double check your line measurements. Let's just spot check some of them. It's 15 and a half by 14. I don't even know why I'm questioning myself because I'm so fucking perfect. So we're gonna just cut. We're just cutting, cutting, cutting. Now why am I going through all of this? To save myself a fortune, that's why I'm going through all of this. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of prep work to save a dollar. Okay, so I have everything cut. I have all my little foam sandwiches like stacked how I want them. So we have our 15 and a half by 14 inch piece on the top. In between, we have our scrap pieces. And then on the bottom, a nice clean 15 and a half by 14 inch piece. 
the top and bottom of my cushions will be nice and smooth. And this was my scrap. Waste not, want not. These are pretty thick, I think. I don't, let's measure them. Damn, this is at least two and a half inches thick. Two and a half inch thick foam. We gotta Google some shit on Joann's right now. Joann's thinks we're suckers. We're not suckers. So this is what he's talking about. Like they have a roll of foam. Two inch foam by the yard. You're gonna die. You're gonna die of a heart attack. $19.99 a yard. Let's see. Oh my God. The three inch is $27.49. <gasps> oh my God, you guys. I'm not shitting you right now. The pricing I'm reading you is already 50% off regularly. It's $54.99 a yard. I told you I wasn't crazy. I knew this shit was expensive. $54.99 a yard, and it is not wide enough to get two chair pads out at 14 inches wide. Oh, Joanne, you guys are cuckoo birds because we're not paying $54.99 a yard. We're not even paying $27.49 a yard. Now, I know they have an option, which I was, ooh, I was thinking about because they were already cut into squares. So they do have this option if you don't feel like going through this mess. So it's two inches thick and then you would just cut it to fit your size. Six packs, so you get six of them, regularly $80, on sale for $39.99. If you got it on sale, that would be $10 a chair pad. And I spent like $2.50 a chair pad. Point of the story is, I told you foam was expensive. So now you're saying, how are you gonna get this all to be together? I have some Super 77 and I'm just going to unlayer my pieces. I'm gonna spray a little Super 77, smack it on. Spray a little Super 77, smack it on. Make my foam sandwich. Yeah, am I spraying Super 77 right in my house? Yes, I am. Should I have something on my floor to protect it? Probably. I'm just gonna do a little dab. It's not like I'm gonna go crazy. I just need it to like stick together so when I pick these up, they don't all fall apart. So I'm just gonna Super 77 that, line this up, Smash that down real good. See? Easy peasy. Boom, 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 boom. See? Doesn't fall apart. Let's take my other one. Smash that down real good. Whoa! Look at us, Joann's. So I'm gonna do that to the three remaining chair pads, and then I've got myself a nice little bit of good foam from my butt. Oh, these are comfy. Okay, one chair pad. Boom. Let's glue up the rest. Okay, so voila, done. Chair pad's done. Went from making our foam to a completely done chair pad. And video over. We're amazing. Just kidding. I would never do that to you. You should know this by now. My videos are all so goddamn long because I include so many damn details, but I think that's good. I don't like watching things where they have one thing and then they skip to the finished thing and you're like, but wait, what the hell happened? How did she get there? This is our no-sew option. I'm gonna show you quickly how to do the no-sew option before we get into the sewing option. It's like as easy as all pie. It's all pie, is that even a saying? It's as easy as all get out. There you go. So if you know how to wrap a Christmas gift, you can make a no sew chair pad. What I did for this one, just so that I could show you, is I pinned it all. So you can see on the back here. So how did I get to this? I'll tell you. So for your fabric, you are probably going to end up using a little more just because we're wrapping it like a present. For the fabric, you know what our size chair pads are. 14 by 15 and a half. For this fabric, I went 34 by 27. The key to this is getting a very tight fit. So what we wanna do is we wanna spray at least on half of this foam where we're gonna put up our first piece of fabric. We wanna spray some Super 77. Now, I'm not gonna spray Super 77 on this foam. I'm actually gonna use this foam for my chair pad. So, pretend. We sprayed Super 77 there. So then what I wanna do is I wanna take up my first side 
of foam making sure that you know this is as centered from here to here as can be now another tip when you are folding this this long edge and this long edge this one is my back and this one is my front these are my sides what we want to make sure is that when we're wrapping our christmas gift if this was my front we don't want to see this on the front no no so we're going to make sure our christmas wrap portion is on our sides not on our front or our back it just makes for a prettier look i think a more finished look now because the super 77 is going to take a minute to get you know tacky and sticky i would hold it down with a straight pin i'm going to take my straight pin and i'm going to go back about a half an inch and i'm going to stick it through the fabric in the foam and back out and I'm a half an inch away from the edge. Stick a straight pin on this end here, pulling nice and snug down and through. A little dab of hot glue here, here, you know, just a little bit won't risk burning your foam, but a little bit is just gonna make sure that this initial placement of fabric is secure. I'm gonna flip this this way because I need to bring this fabric over top, just like a Christmas gift. However, look at this raw edge. What? We can't have that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold our edge over a tiny bit. It doesn't need to be much. I like to use a spray bottle of water and my iron. Yes, I'm ironing right on the tile. What's it gonna hurt its tile? Making a nice crisp seam. You want to do this step. Everything is gonna be just, you could go in with a bead of hot glue here to keep that down if you wanted to. We're gonna pull tight. Obviously you would take out your pins at this point. And again, I'm not gonna hot glue just yet. What I wanna do is make sure I have everything tight and I'm gonna use my straight pins to hold everything in place. Stick it down, stick it up, stick it down, stick it up. Pulling your fabric tight as you go. No baggy fabric, no baggy fabric. Boom, okay, now I've got my pins in. Everything is looking good, let's flip it. Everything is looking nice and smooth. I left this here like this because this is gonna make it easy for me to take my now hot glue. Hot glue on fabric to fabric, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's amazing. It's an amazing hold. Without taking my pins out, I'm gonna run a bead of hot glue along my fabric, close that seam down. Run my bead, close my seam down. Since we took the time to iron down a nice edge, that should look sewn and it's gonna hold wonderfully. Leave your pins in until you know that your hot glue is secure. Boom, 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 done with that. So now you have your two Christmas present sides that you need to wrap. Now this is where the iron is gonna come in handy. If I were to just take this in, just like you fold a Christmas gift, I'm gonna fold in my corners. Not ironing gives me bulky corners. We don't want bulky corners. So I'm gonna fold in my one corner. Fold that in like so. I'm gonna get my spray bottle, boop, boop, and I'm gonna iron this super, super crisp. Once that is sharp, I'm going to do my other side. Pulling that corner nice and tight, making sure I don't have any bulky fabric underneath there. You know how sometimes when you're wrapping a Christmas gift and the paper underneath it gets like wadded up? That's exactly what we don't want here. Get a nice crisp seam. Now again, we have another raw edge here that we do not want. Just like we did the top, spray, spray, spray. Iron, 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 boom, boom, boom. Just sharpening up our edges. What you would wanna even do to avoid baggy corners is put a little dab of hot glue from here to the side. That way that holds down your bulky corner. Once that glue's there, you're gonna fold this up nice and tight, about a half an inch away from your edge seam. You're gonna stick your straight pins in to hold your fabric secure. Boom, done. So now we're gonna use our glue gun like scotch tape on a Christmas present. Underneath, boop, 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 glue it down. Underneath here, boop, 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 glue, boop, 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 glue. Perfect, and that is looking flawless. Same thing to our other side. Fold it in, spray bottle, iron everything nice and crisp. Make sure your edges are good. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Iron, 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 right on your tile floor. Make your little hem. Do, do, do. 
Put your little glue dab here. Fold this on up on this side here. Pin those suckers in. Do your seams, do your seams, hot glue, hot glue. Pull out all your straight pin holders. You may even wanna go in right here, add a little dot of hot glue here, and a little dot of hot glue here, just so that those are pressed down nice and perfect. But look at that. You just know so to yourself a chair pad. And look at how great it looks. I mean, no one would be the wiser. Even our Christmas wrapping edge, because we ironed all those creases down flat, looks Perfect. I mean, part of me right now is like, well, why don't you just fucking know so all the rest of the ones you're gonna do, Sherry, that would be much easier and you'd be done. I mean, because they look good. I'm gonna sew it. Who am I kidding? I don't know why. <laughs> really looking at this, I'm like, why, dum-dum? You could be done in like 20 minutes with four chair pads if you did no sew option. Point of the story is, if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't feel like sewing, or you don't know how to sew, the no sew chair pad option turns out pretty fucking great if you ask me. No one would know that you didn't sew this. There you go, I told you guys I was gonna give you a no sew option, and I did, and look at how amazing it is. So, for those of you who just are dying to whip out your sewing machine and spend hours sewing chair pads, don't worry, I won't let you down, because we're gonna do that next. Okay, all you sewers, let's get to sewing. Now, I am a self-taught sewer. Sewing, I think, is pretty easy, especially straight line sewing. If you have a sewing machine and you don't feel super confident about sewing, like you would never attempt to make a dress on a sewing machine, I pretty much guarantee you could make a chair pad on a sewing machine. But again, I am not a professional sewer. I mean, I've made Halloween costumes and I've made a skirt from a pattern. Pretty much everything I learned on my sewing machine, I just taught myself. It's not hard. This is my fabric. I have it folded in half right now. It is 54 inch wide fabric, so 54 from here to here. I did buy a little over two yards because it was the last of the bolt because it was on clearance. There was probably like this much more than two yards on the bolt, so I just took it all. As we know, this is my chair pad. 15 and a half inches side to side and 14 inches front to back. We made our cushions exactly like that fits right on the paper, exactly the size we need them. We cannot cut our fabric exactly the size we need it because we need extra for seam allowance to allow us to sew. I'm adding an inch to each of these measurements. I need the final squares to be 16 and a half by 15. So I need a top and a bottom square that will measure the 16 and a half by 15. And then what I wanna do, I want to do a band, so I'm gonna do a square of fabric on the top, a square of fabric on the bottom, but instead of sewing those two pieces together so that I have a seam that's running along here, I'm actually going to cut a strip and I'm gonna sew my top fabric to the strip and my bottom fabric to the strip. So it gives me a nice square finished cover for these. It needs to be 61 inches. How did I get that length? I took my handy dandy tape measure and I just started here and I went around here went around here, went around here, so that was 36, went around, went around to this corner, and that says 22 is 58, and then I just added on an inch or two for seam allowance. Now that I have these made, I know that they are two and a half inch thick, so my length is going to be 60 or 61, and then my width is gonna be three. So that said, I could get three squares using the 54 inch width at the 15 inch measurement. I need a total of two, four, six, eight, because I need a top and a bottom, so two squares per chair pad. I can get three from one section, three from this section, that's six, and then three more, which would be nine, so one extra. So I'm just basically going to do exactly what I did on the foam. Do my marks, make my straight line, cut everything out. Every fabric you buy is gonna have this like raw edge. Don't measure from there. You don't want that raw edge in your sewing project. So we're just gonna make some lines 15, 15, 15 so that we can connect all of the dots and then cut along that 15 inch mark. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Woohoo! I just need to do that two more times.
Okay, so now that I have all of my 15 inch marks laid out, I've turned my fabric a quarter turn and I'm gonna measure out all of my uh, 16 and a half pieces. And then just go along and connect those dots as well. My little grid is drawn out and now I just need to cut out all of my squares. So that's easy. Let's just do that. Ew. Really? Okay, so we have our nine. Technically, we have nine squares. We don't need nine squares, we just need eight. Oh, it's already so, so cute. This square is the bottom. In between, to make the top and the bottom connect to each other, we're going to take a piece of fabric and we're gonna sew it here along the edge and on the bottom edge, and that's gonna wrap all the way around to make a nice, clean, crisp, square chair pad. You could measure your top and your bottom pieces so that they rolled over the edge and met in the middle. When you do something like that, you are gonna pull down your corners because this and this have to meet up so it kind of makes more of a rounded corner, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I just wanted a nice super square corner. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Now all I need to do is cut out my strips and then we can begin sewing. Because I don't have a strip of extra fabric that is 60 inches. I need anywhere between 58 and 60 inches long. I have to piece together two pieces. So I've got my handy dandy sewing machine out and yes, I sew on the floor. How do you press your presser foot when you're on the floor? You just stick your leg up like this and then you just press it down. <laughs> That's what I do. I've been sewing like this forever. My two strips of fabric, they're together. I'm not even gonna pin them. It's literally like seven and a half inches long, normal white cotton thread loaded into my machine. I do have my little guide for my half inch seam allowance on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead, just sew these together so that I have one long 60 inch strip that I can cut into two long 60 inch strips. Voila, done. So now, when we open this up, we're gonna have one long strip of fabric that we are going to cut now into three and a half inches wide. Before I cut my strips, I'm gonna go ahead and iron down my seams flat so everything's nice and crisp. And now, just like every other thing we've been doing, measure, mark, cut. We know our foam is two and a half inches thick. I've been adding an inch so that I have a half inch on either side for seam allowance. So two and a half inches of foam equals three and a half inches of fabric. Three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, and seven. Let's make our straight line. Bob, I need you to calm down. Stop it, please. Are you done? That's my skin. So here is our long ass piece. That is gonna be our nice finished side edge. So I have two, I need two more. That's what I'm gonna make. Sew two pieces together, measure them, cut them, done. Four pieces total. Okay, so yay. Through the magic of YouTube, I have my four strips all cut out. So now we can get to sewing. Now that all the prep work's done, this straight line stitch stuff is gonna go fast. At least that's what I think. I mean, it's gonna go fast. So I'm gonna take one strip and I'm going to pin right sides together. I want the pretty print of this fabric to be up against the pretty print of this fabric. This is the front edge, this is the back edge. What I wanna do is I want to start the edge of this fabric 
as close to center back as possible. So I'm going to start pinning here because I want to have it open in the back so I can shove my pillow in and then sew it closed. We got to the corner of our bottom fabric. So we're gonna pinch our side fabric exactly at the corner and then we're gonna fold it away from the area that we need to pin. So what you're left with is like this little, little teepee. When you sew, 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 it will fold out perfectly in the corner. We're gonna go along this edge, pin, pin, pin. Corner number two, I'm gonna make a point in the corner, fold it away, boom. Teepee number two, go along, finish pinning this. measurements aren't right for my side piece. I mean, I'm guessing it's because when you make your corners, you lose inches of fabric that I didn't account for. I could literally have cut this part out, re-sewn a piece of fabric on to here, but you know I don't roll like that. So here's what we discovered. We need to take into account for the corners. I told you, I'm not a professional seamstress. I think of stuff in my head. Then when it gets down to, you know, the real life part of it, sometimes my measurements are off. But it's not like I don't have extra fabric and we can't fix it. And also too, me making this mistake means you will not make this mistake. Cause I'm gonna tell you exactly how much fabric you need for your side piece. Shit happens, this is real life. The reason it happened again is because I did not calculate in my measurements for the corner. So apparently, you can't just go around the cushion and measure it and think that that's the length of your side edge, because it's not. You have to allow for the corners. How much do you have to allow for? When you measure your aroundness, allow two inches per each corner and add that to your measurement. If your around measurement equals 60, add two, four, six, eight inches, and then you should be safe. That is the new rule. The more you know. You know me. It's not like I do this before I film. It's like, it's happening. This is like happening live. I'm not gonna lie about it because that's not my style. I think that if you see me make a mistake, it helps you remember not to do the same thing. I don't think you need to see me fix them, so let me just fix them real quick. Be right back and then we'll repin everything. And then we can finally get to sewing. Crisis averted. We now have our exact right length of side strip. So now that that's taken care of, let's rewind and pin our side fabric onto our top fabric. Center back, pin, pin, pin. Right sides together, even edges together. Make a little pinch. Fold it away from the side that I'm going to pin. All edges should be lined up, pinning. Boom, easy. Just pin it down the line. Because now that our side fabric is the right length, we can go quick like a bunny. Because we know it's all gonna work out in the end. That crisis wasn't that bad. Our final corner. And now you can see my fabric ends line up. Yay! So this little flap we are going to keep open so that we can shove our pillow inside our pillowcase once we've sewn the top and the bottom onto the side. These will not get sewn together until the very end. So now that we've done this for the second time, we're gonna start to sew. And straight line sewing is gonna be quick, quick, quick. The only problem that you might run into are these corners, but I'm gonna tell you a surefire way to make those happen perfectly. Don't you worry, I got you. I'm going to start sewing on my back edge, three inches or so away, there's no math to it. I just know I wanna leave a gap to shove my pillow in. So I'm gonna start sewing about here, up against my little metal guide that I already set at a half an inch. If you don't have a metal guide, sometimes I don't get this metal guide out. I just get like a piece of tape so I can just make sure that I'm feeding my fabric in as straight as possible and keeping my half inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna put my pressure foot down and I am going to lock in my first stitch by running my machine forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. We're gonna go forward and back and forward and back and then 
forward. Here we go. We're going to sew to our almost corner. Now, pretend I'm sewing down this way. I don't want to keep my fabric folded here and sew on top of it because that would sew it shut. As we're sewing, we want to lift this corner away and fold it away from us. And we're going to sew, 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 sew all the way to the end and off the edge of the fabric. So your fabric is like this. Sew, 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 sew. Fold the fabric away from you. Line up your fold with your bottom edge. Sew, 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 sew off the fabric. I'm getting close to my corner. I'm taking my fabric and I'm folding it towards me and I'm gonna continue to sew right off my fabric. Off my fabric. Pressure foot up, pull my fabric out, cut my thread. Here's where we started sewing. Our fabric was laying this way. We folded it down towards us and we sewed completely off of the edge of the fabric. I'm gonna turn my fabric a quarter turn because I wanna sew on this side seam, but this little corner fold is in the way, so we need to get it back this way. The only way to do that is to take our handy dandy seam ripper, unstitch like two or three of those stitches. And you're like, why did I sew all the way to the end if I'm going to just unstitch those stitches? There's a reason to the madness. We wanna keep this line here. So just seam rip a couple of stitches so that you can pull your folded corner flap away from the edge that you want to sew and back over the edge that you just sewed. Now I'm gonna sew, 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 all the way down. Fabric in. I'm not gonna do any forward and back. I'm not gonna lock anything in. I'm just gonna put it down and sew a nice quick straight line. And now I'm coming up to my corner. Boom. Same method. Seam rip just a few of those last little stitches out so it is out of my way. Everything is nice and squared up. And now I'm going to sew boop, 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 boop down that line. See how fast that's going? Boom, boop, boop, boom, 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 boom. This is my back flap. So I'm only gonna sew probably about to here because I do want about a five inch gap so that I can shove my pillow in eventually. And then when I get to where I wanna stop, I'm gonna forward back, forward back, so I lock it in. And back and forward and back and forward and done. Perfect. Now, all we need to do is take out our pins and then we're going to pin our top fabric on to this edge of our side piece. Yay. Okay, so all the pins are out. This is my front. This is my back with the flap. And now we have bottom or top fabric, however you wanna look at it. So pinning this fabric is a little bit more cumbersome than the first go round. What I like to do is start at my corners because if your corners don't match up, you're screwed. So I'm going to take this corner, kind of fold this into like a, a taco. And you're gonna match that into your nice little corner fold. Kind of ease it in there, line up your raw edges. You're gonna pin it on this side of the corner, and then you're gonna pin it on this side of the corner, holding it in place. Then I'm gonna move to my opposite corner. I'm gonna match the point of my top fabric and match it up in there, and then pin on either side of the corner. Now go to a next corner, fold of my side fabric, corner of my top fabric, fits right on in there and pin on either side of the corner. Boom. Now we can go and pin our sides. I like to start in the middle. If I start in the middle, then I can finesse my fabric smooth as I reach out to the corners. And that side looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna come this away and I can already tell I've got a little buckling going on. So I'm probably gonna just adjust these pins here to make sure everything is smooth. We don't wanna fold our fabric, we just wanna adjust, smooth out, finesse it a little and pin that back in so everything is now smooth. Then I'm gonna move to the opposite side. Do the same thing. Start in the middle, pin, pin, pin. Go 
the side, lining up those raw edges. Perfect. Boom. Moving on. I do pin the flaps closed, but I'm not going to sew them closed. I just pin them closed so I make sure everything is smooth and lined up. Last couple pins. Then we're going to sew the top onto our side. And then we're going to have the most beautiful box pillowcase thing that you've ever seen in your life. Let's get back on the sewing machine. Same thing we did to the bottom. It just is a tiny baby bit trickier when you get to those corners just because you have so much fabric now. I'm going to start at the back just like I did when I sewed this edge and I'm going to start in a, approximately the same spot, forward and back, forward and back. When I get to that corner, I'll show you what to do. This is key. Make sure every piece of fabric is folded in and not underneath your pressure foot. You don't want to sew fabric together that doesn't need to be sewn together. Pretend this is the edge that is towards me. I have taken every piece of it and I have folded it down and away from the seam that I want to sew. Everything is down and away. I'm going to do a little forward and back action to start, but then just sew right off the edge of the fabric. Forward, back, forward, back, and forward, forward, forward. And I'm coming to my corner, but I know I'm okay because everything is pushed under and away from the seam that I am sewing. Boom. Just like we did originally, I need to seam rip a little baby bit of corner. I've seam ripped it so that I can fold it down and away. The fold is back up against the edge that I've just sewn, leaving this edge free for me to sew right now. And there may be some sewers out there that are like, lady, that is not the way you do this. But guess what? It's the way I do it and it's worked for me and it gives me a super sharp box edge, which you will see in a minute. Okay, I'm coming up on that other corner. I know I'm safe. Everything is down and away. It's like the bend and snap. It's down and away. down and away. Since I'm only going to sew about five inches of this side, when I get to where I want to stop, I'm going to lock it in by going forward and back, forward and back. Back and forward and back and stop. Perfect. Great. Great, great, great. Okay. So there is one little last step and it's not taking out our pins. We have to sharpen up our four corners and that's only gonna take a second and then we get to shove our pillow in. All the pins are out and now it's time to sharpen up those corners. Okay, so here's one stitch line right here and here's another stitch line and they make an X at the corner. So where they make an X, you're gonna seam rip that fold so that it is flat and you're gonna do that on both top and bottom because what we want to do is we want to have that flat so that the two seams can fold onto themselves. So now I'm free to take my two seams and fold them perfectly straight on top of each other like that. And then I'm going to pin, making sure my seams edges are lined up. Pin that just to hold that in place. Pin on one side and pin on the other side. Okay, and I'm going to do that to all four corners. Here's my stitch line one. Here's my stitch line two. I'm going to seam rip to that X. I can open that up and now it will lay flat. So do that to both sides. Okay, so I've seam ripped. And now I can take my two side seams and fold them flat on top of each other and pin. So we have a perfectly straight fold. Okay, moving on to corner number three. X, 
perfect. Fold side seam on top of side seam, matching up my raw edges and pinning that together to hold it in place. And my last corner, same thing. Seam rip, flat, pin, boom. We're gonna take each little fold, go back to the machine, so straight down. Just like that. I'm gonna do that four times. And I'm gonna lock every stitch in on these corners. I'm gonna go forward, back, forward, back, forward, back on all of them. Forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. So, 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 so. Get to the end, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, and done. Easy. Moving on to corner number two. And forward, back, forward, back. Forward, 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 forward. Get to the end, forward, back, forward, back. Lock that shit in. Corner number three. And our last corner. Four back, four back, four back. Perfect mundo. And now we'll take out those pins. The pins are out. And before we flip it right side out, we do want to go and trim all of our edges a little bit closer to our actual seam so we don't have so much bulk on the inside of our pillow. Just cut a little bit off. And on the corners, I'm gonna cut a little angle. They fold in better nicely that way. Better nicely, you know what I mean. Make sure I'm not cutting my actual fabric, just my edges, just a little bit. Just cleaning shit up. We just want it to be less bulky is all we're doing. Now that we have trimmed away the fat, we are ready to turn, I mean, and look at how perfectly square that is. That's money. Now we're ready to turn it right side out. So, I mean, literally turn it right side out. Press out those nice, sharp ass corners. And we can put our pillow in because we have a back flap opening. Yay! Let's grab our pillow, kind of fold it in half like a taco. Just shove it in. I mean, there's no other way to do it. This little hole is little and this is big so you just kind of gotta shove it in shove it in make sure that your corners of your pillowcase line up with the corners of your actual pillow making sure my seam is right on the corner of my pillow <gasps> look at how good it looks sharp sharp edges can you see those babies Look at that. Look at that. That looks good. <gasps> Damn. That's a nice fucking mitered corner, Sherry. And even though I may not have done it the exact proper way, it's the way that worked for me and hopefully should work for you too. Unfortunately, we do have to hand sew a little bit. Fold in, hand stitch. Do, 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 do. Fold in. Hand stitch. Do, 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 do. Fold this under. Hand stitch. Do, 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 do. Hand stitch that closed. Unfortunately, you cannot do that on the sewing machine. So you're going to hand stitch it closed. That's what's going to happen. So I just wanted to show you really quickly a side by side comparison. This is the one that we sewed. It has our nice seamed edges, our nice crisp corners. This is the one that we did not sew. Still, they both look good. So I'm just saying, non-sew option, sewed option. Now this one, if I was being really, really, really good about it, I would iron it before I sewed it closed to really get my edges nice and crisp. I love the squared off look of them. So sewing, no sewing. You pick the one you wanna do. I have three more of these suckers to sew. So I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna sew them up real quick and then I'll show you the final result.
Okay, are you ready to see the super final, final finished Starbucks table makeover? You're gonna die, you're gonna shit yourself. It looks so good. Here we go. Goodness. Those chair pads came out amazing. They just really bring the whole look together. I love every second of this table. Just when we thought we couldn't make this table any better, we did. These chair pads are amazing. And a no-sew option will be just as amazing. You don't have to get out your sewing machine to make these suckers. And the best part is, we didn't spend a fortune on the chair pad foam at the Joann's. As you know, and that could range, depending if you get it on sale or not, from like $20 a yard, all the way up to like $60 a yard. We bought our little twin bed foam mattress pad at the Walmart for $9.47. And the amount of yardage that I used, I purchased two yards, but I didn't. I used about a yard and a half. I got that at 50% off. That was eight something a yard. I'll just round it up to $10 because I used about a yard and a half. So $10 and $10, that's $20 for four chair pads. I know, right? It's crazy. And they're super thick and I love them. And they serve more than one purpose. Not only are they super comfortable and you can spend all your time at your patio table, drinking it up, having conversations with your friends because they're totally plush and cush and my butt feels nice on them. These chairs are also metal. If you put this patio table out in the sun and you didn't have a chair pad on them and you wanted to sit down and let's say you were in shorts or you just jumped out of the pool. Hot metal chairs does not sound like a fun time. These little chair pads are gonna save our little butts from third degree burns if we accidentally sit down on hot metal chairs. When all is said and done, we made over this five piece patio set for $70. And it looks like it costs a lot more than $70 in my opinion. Also, Starbucks, I don't know if you're, you know, clued in, if you subscribe to This Is Real Life with Sherry, but if you do when you watch this video and I go to my local Starbucks and I see a table like this, I'm gonna know where you got the idea and I'm gonna want my lifetime supply of quad espressos iced in a venti cup with extra ice and sugar-free vanilla and light breve. I'm gonna want that. Or how about you watch this Starbucks and you're like, damn, This Is Real Life with Sherry had a really good idea for our patio sets. Maybe we should call her, I mean, I might work out a partnership with you. It won't take much to, to like a mocha. Be like, hey, Sherry, we'll give you a mocha, you know. I'm just saying, you're welcome, Starbucks, because this is a pretty badass idea, and you probably want to steal it. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. I push out a new DIY Wednesday video every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. So if you have that notification bell rung, you will not miss a one. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.